You're listening to a podcast of the World Stroke Academy, the educational platform of the World Stroke Organization. Future Stroke Leaders is an initiative of the WSO to develop the technical and research skills of the next generation of stroke professionals. The World Stroke Academy welcomed the contribution of the Future Stroke Leaders members by inviting them to cover specific stroke-related topics in our PEARLS podcast initiative. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the World Stroke Academy PEARLS podcast series. I am Dr. Matthias Alet, a stroke neurologist from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and a very proud member of the second cohort of the Future Stroke Leaders program of the World Stroke Organization. Before we begin, I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Eric Seng, a thrombosis focused hematologist and assistant professor at the University of Toronto, who kindly agreed to supervise me with this podcast. Today, we will give an update about antiphospholipid syndrome and stroke. We must remember that stroke and TIA are important neurological complications of antiphospholipid syndrome and testing for antibodies should be considered particularly in individuals after the age of 50 years and or with a history of autoimmune disease, venous thromboembolism or obstetric morbidity. So let's talk about antiphospholipid syndrome and stroke. APS is an acquired autoimmune disorder with an estimated incidence between 1 and 2 cases per 100,000. The cardinal feature is arterial, venous or microvascular thrombosis and or obstetric morbidity, including recurrent early miscarriage, late pregnancy loss, and placental insufficiency or preeclampsia. In this podcast, we will focus on an update of APS associated to stroke and other cerebrovascular disorders. Let's begin with acute ischemic stroke and TIA attack, as they are the most common manifestations of arterial pathology in APS, with approximately 20% of patients with APS suffering of a stroke in a 10-year follow-up. Thrombosis is thought to be the most common mechanism, with intracranial large arteries being the most common site of occlusion. We can describe other causes of a stroke, for example, embolism from barbular heart disease, the Lippmann Sachs endocarditis, vasculitis like manifestations, chronic occlusive vasculopathy affecting small and medium sized intracerebral arteries, and carotid or vertebral artery dissection. The cerebral vein thrombosis is an uncommon manifestation of APS, but when it occurs, it represents the first APS clinical manifestation. This highlights the importance of testing for APS in patients with CBG, even in cases with possible alternative etiologies, because a finding of APS may change the clinical management. Another rare but life threatening manifestation of APS is the catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome. This variant is seen in approximately 1% of APS patients, is characterized by rapid onset of multifocal microvascular thrombosis affecting three or more organ systems. Central nervous system is uh, frequently involved, along with renal, lung, and cardiac involvement. Now, let's continue with the diagnostic evaluation. In whom should you should check for APS as a stroke risk factor? factor? In general, there is a consensus to investigate young patients with a stroke of undetermined etiology. However, the routine screening is not recommended in cases where there are no other manifestations of APS and where a clear etiology of a stroke, such as carotid artery disease or atrial fibrillation, has been found. A complete workup uh, should include a brain MRI, intracranial and extracranial vascular imaging, a prolonged cardiac rhythm assessment, echocardiography, and in selecting cases, a bubble study for intracardiac shunts. Specifically talking about APS studies, there are international consensus classification criteria for APS. 
which were primarily designed for research purposes. The interpretation of laboratory and clinical information can be challenging and often requires expert review and interdisciplinary discussion. According to current guidance, the accurate determination of antiphospholipid antibodies requires the testing for all three criteria, lupus anticoagulant and IgG and IgM anticardiolipin and anti-beta-2 glycoprotein-1 antibodies, and checking for persistence of positive results beyond 12 weeks. Demonstrating the persistence is essential to exclude patients with false positive results, such as in viral and bacterial infections, HIV, and syphilis. Lupus anticoagulant testing should be performed in patients not receiving any anticoagulant treatment to avoid falsely abnormal results. Another important question is about the age threshold for testing. The current recommendation indicates that routine screening should be in younger patients younger than 50 years of age with a stroke, although this is a pragmatic point of view. It's not a strictly evidence-based, so in older patients, antibody testing should be considered on an individualized base, uh, mainly if other stroke etiologies has been ruled out and uh, thrombosis is highly suspected. Regarding the optimal timing for testing, we must remember that this is undefined. For patients with acute stroke, the laboratory testing for these antibodies in the acute phase may prevent this being missed later, but remember that the testing must be repeated 12 weeks later to ensure abnormal results are persistently positive. My recommendation on this point of view is to have a pre-specified algorithm previously discussed with your stroke team, hematologists and general practitioners. When trying to determine the risk stratification, the so-called triple positive phenotype is considered to carry the highest risk of thrombosis, both for the first events in asymptomatic carriers and recurrent events in established APS patients. However, lupus anticoagulant is the most predicted for thrombosis. In the last minutes of this podcast, I would like to talk about management. In our experience, a multidisciplinary approach is preferred to determine the optimal secondary prevention therapy. The choice for antithrombotic treatment is between vitamin K antagonists versus antiplatelet therapy. In clear APS associated stroke, the recommended treatment for most patients is anticoagulation with warfarin or other vitamin K antagonists at an INR target between 2 to 3. There is evidence supporting uh, BKA from early retrospective and small prospective studies. The role of dual antiplatelet therapy and combined anticoagulant antiplatelet therapy in APS associated arterial thrombosis is of interest. A meta analysis reported greater efficacy of dual versus single antiplatelet therapy and combined BKA antiplatelet versus BKA, BKA alone. But these findings need to be confirmed in prospective studies. Regarding the direct oral anticoagulants, we know that they have several advantages over the BKA uh, anticoagulants. However, in APS, uh, actually, we recommend against the use. Uh, there are meta analyses of four randomized clinical trials that conclude that the treatment with direct oral anticoagulant was associated with an increased risk of subsequent arterial thrombosis compared to warfarin, particularly in triple positive patients and those with previous arterial thrombosis. There are now some trials exploring the efficacy of this treatment, for example, a trial for rivaroxaban in a stroke patient with APS that, aiming, that is aiming to assess the efficacy of high-intensity rivaroxaban, uh, 50 mg twice daily. Last, in the case of anticoagulant refractory APS, the management of new thrombosis is largely empirical. Options include escalating to high-intensity warfarin, 
addition of an antiplate agent or changing anticoagulation to low molecular weight heparin. To conclude, I would like to give you a few take home messages. First, a stroke is an important neurological complication of antiphospholipid syndrome. Testing for antiphospholipid antibodies should be considered in individuals under the age of 50 years and or with a history of autoimmune disease, venous thromboembolism or obstetric morbidity. Second, antiphospholipid antibodies testing should include all three criteria, lupus anticoagulant, IgG and IgM anticardiopin antibodies and anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies. Third, a, third, a multidisciplinary approach involving experts in hematology and stroke neurology is recommended for diagnosis evaluation of patients with suspected APS. For management, the front line today is the vitamin K antagonist and the INR range from 2 to 3. If you are interested in reading more about this topic, you can go through a paper recently published in the International Journal of Stroke, Antiphospholipid Syndrome, Antiphospholipid Antibodies and Stroke from Dr. Prabal Mittal and colleagues from the University College London Hospital NIH Foundation Trust. And also, you will find more reasons ahead. It's been a pleasure to be here in the Postcard series. I would like to express again my gratitude to Dr. Eric Tseng for his collaboration as a mentor for this podcast and to the World Stroke Organization and World Stroke Academy for this opportunity. I'm Dr. Matias Palet from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for listening to this podcast. You can find additional stroke education material and resources in our World Stroke Academy website and social media channels.